It is my honor, privilege, in the name of the Lord Jesus, with the pastor's advisory committee members, the building committee members, and the members of the Rising Fly Church of God, in the glory of the Lord Jesus and in the name of Christ, to cut this ribbon to declare this church is officially open. Church, move and move now. 
Can I just say that I prayed and I told the church about this that day and we had prayed against the sightly eyesore and the lack of parking that it would never hinder church growth. And do you know the longer we stayed in that building, the more cars lined the highways and the more people pulled up into that place and shoved in four cars deep to hear the word of God preached. We messed up every church growth statistic ever known to man. But then the second thing he said was this. How much money do you plan on borrowing? And I said, oh, I'm not going to borrow. We were doing it debt free. I was this energetic, excited young man. And he paused and went maybe with the most enthusiastic energy that he had possessed that day. He said this, that's impossible. I said, no, sir, we're not going to borrow the money. God will supply it. He said with his big city attitude, and this is a direct quote. I won't ever forget it. In a community like this, and in a church like this, you will never be able to build the sanctuary you want debt free. You better come up with a plan. Should have invited him to this service. <laughs> I got out of the car feeling so rejected and so broken. I was walking back to my office underneath the, the, the stairs of the parsonage. And a pastor friend at that time, another leader in the church, called me. He was so excited about the building and he said this, when you decide to borrow the money, you talk to this banker at the Bank of Dave. My already fragile heart from talking to the people from Atlanta broke even more. I never made it to my office and I turned and went to the altars and I laid before the Lord. I said, oh God, am I wrong? Can we not build a church in this community, debt free. I prayed that day and encouraged myself in the Lord and I was searching for answers. And the power of the Holy Ghost fell on me, standing by the front aisle. Matter of fact, that was before the stage was ripped out. I was standing there and, and I heard, if I've ever heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me and through me was that day. The power of the Holy Ghost fell and out of the bottom of my spirit came every scripture on faith. Scriptures I didn't even know that I knew began to come out of my mouth declaring the possibility. I remember. I knew that day that God was speaking to me. I remember saying, oh my Lord, out of my spirit, you're a God of provision. And I know that day God had a plan to get glory from this building. The, the few people that were here when we announced the plan, I made this statement. I want this to be a church that the people are rising for and point a finger at going, look what God did. Because there's no way that church can build that sanctuary that free. I even made the comment, I don't want this to be a church that somebody goes, oh, look what Dr. Jones said. Now listen, I even prayed that prayer. I wouldn't have minded if Dr. Jones would have built this church. But the whole time I knew that I wanted this to be a reflection of God. And I still want this house to be a place that is not focused on what we have done. But that is focused on a God that has all power and a God that can. This dedication service is not about us. It's not about me. It's about a but God experience. I was told that day in the back of the sleek back Jaguar sitting on the plush leather seats that it was impossible. But that day I had a but God experience and I stand here today preaching the first sermon in this pulpit. you a little bit. That day in the altars, the Lord led me to a scripture. I was not studying this. Out of all of those scriptures came pouring out of my spirit. He led me to Haggai chapter 2 verse 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first war? How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I have committed with you, 
when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it was a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all the nations shall come. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace saith the Lord. I knew that day that God had spoken a prophetic word from the prophets of old over rising fall. So we started. I would not advise any busy preachers to do what I'm about to share you. When we started this building fund, we didn't have $100,000 in the bank. When we started this building, we didn't have a pile of money to go forward. As a matter of fact, we had nothing. Zero. I once asked Sister Diane, why has this church never had a building fund? And her comment was, we never thought we would need it. But God. And, and this is about to scare you. At no time in this building project did we have $100,000 in the bank. The most we ever had was a time we had to write a check for $66,000 to be able to give to the metal building man. We'd have a need and we'd pray and we'd work. We'd have a need and we'd pray and we would work. And, and, and God would supply the need. We ran out of money several times. And then I remember one night my wife came to me and, 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 and kind of spoke a word of encouragement that I spoke it over the church. That if we would only remain faithful, the oil would never run out and the flour would never diminish. We'd get down to the bottom of the barrel and here comes some more money. Here came some more oil. Here came some more stuff. Listen, can I tell you something? We've had a but God experience since we started this building process. When we chose this land, we researched and found out some timber company owned the land. I prayed and I called about buying it. The lady says, we don't usually, that land's not for sale, but I'll come down and meet with you. Some very nice lady came down and we walked around this land and she says, not for sale. And I don't usually break up the church. This land is 25 acres here. We don't break it up. And I said, man, we don't have the money to buy 25 acres. I called a friend of the church and I said, hey, listen, I may need some help. Um, we don't need 25 acres. We'd love to have 25 acres, but we can't afford that. And he says, I tell you what, we'll go to, I'll buy it and then I'll sell you the, the, the however many acres you want. And I said, that's a good deal. But the lady called me back two days later and they said this, we don't usually break up our land, but for your church, I'll sell you one acre or I'll sell you 10 acres or I'll sell you all the acres, but God. We didn't have the money, so we raised it, sold barbecue plates and paid cash for it. And then all of a sudden, people began to show up from this community. And they, we, we, Frank Wallen donated all kind of stuff and Papa Jack donated all kind of stuff. We had men running equipment that I can't beg to come to church because they dug their hands and walk away. But every morning they were out here spreading this dirt. It would have cost us about fifty or $60,000 in this land to get this land up to par and banks ripped down. But you know what? We had a what God experience and all we paid for was the diesel fuel to go inside the machine. But God. And then I had a lot of people say this. How in the world did y'all buy that land? I've been trying to buy this land for 40 years and they would never sell it for me. I said, because God was saving this land for this church to be built, to reach this community in the name of Jesus Christ. But God. So we ran out of money. We sold the parsonage. And then we ran out of money again. And we sold the old sanctuary. And let me tell you, both sales of the sanctuary and the parsonage were cash sales, quick close. We had a but God experience and we got all of that money and invested it in here. Don't tell me I serve a God that can't provide all of my needs or put it in place to Jesus. We've worked and we've worked. The electrician who donated all of his time said it would have cost about $60,000 for the electrical in this building. And all we paid for was supplies. But God. All the framing, all the plumbing, all the electrical, all the painting, all the trim work, all the floor work donated. But God. 
With man, this is impossible. But with God, there is nothing impossible. You may be in a bad place in your life. Can I just speak a word over you real fast? God is not dead in your life. You may go be through a time. Listen, and this is not about this metal building. It's not about the stained concrete floors or the beautiful uh, judges panels Marvin Spurgeon built. Here's what it's about. In your life, this is not about this church, but about the example of this church. And this church is living proof that no matter how bad your life is, God can come through in the nick of time to get you out of your pit, out of your despair. Don't you give up on a God that is able to do the impossible. It's about the example that we can No matter what God experienced And I want to challenge this local church Our vision became cloudy With the vision of the building Our shoulders became weary With the burden of a new sanctuary Our knees became weak Under the weight of a heavy load But today marks a new year A new beginning, a new sanctuary But still serving the same Thankful God. So let us refocus on a God that is able. Let us be renewed like the eagle. Let us run and not be weary. Let us walk and not faint. Let us be renewed in our worship. Let the burden of the past be lifted. That our lives may display the victory that has been given through God. I pray that God has shown himself and that he will show himself yet again to be faithful. God has displayed how he hears and he answers prayers. God has proven that he has, has all the power. So let the church live a life that will allow the people in this community, in this county, and in this region see the glory of God through the works that he wants to perform through the ministries of this church.